السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأن هذا صراطي مستقيما فاتبعوه ولا تتبعوا السبل فتفرق بكم عن سبيله ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تتقون صدق الله العلي العظيم Our Islamic faith stands on three main pillars These three main foundations and pillars they work together If one of them is missing then the entire building would collapse The first one of these three components of religion, of Islamic religion, is aqeedah, the doctrine, the articles of faith, the basic belief system. These are the fundamental principles of Islam. And we should recognize them, understand them, embrace them, and promote them. And we cannot practice taqlid to follow someone because he said, let's say, God is one because that person said God is one, then I would say God is one. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to understand it yourself. You have, to, yes, maybe a book, a person would guide you to that path. But then at the end, you have to carry this belief in your heart. You have to carry this conviction in your mind. And the first article of these usul, usul al-deen, the principles of religion, is monotheism, tawheed. Imam Ali alayhi salam says the very first step into religion, awwal al-deeni ma'rifatuh, to recognize God, to understand God. To know about the identity of God, to know about his character, his attributes. And Tawheed has dimensions. This book, Monotheism, the Identity of God, speaks about Tawheed al that, the unity of the essence, Tawheed al Sifat, the unity of the attributes, Tawheed al Af'al, the unity of the deeds, Tawheed al Ibadah the unity of the worshipping, and so on and so forth. Speaks about the identity of God. We must understand Tawheed extensively. So when we ask, what is the difference between God in Islam and God in Christianity? We know the answer. What is the difference between God in Islam and other deities in Hinduism, in Buddhism? We know the answer. And also we must know God very well in our own faith. Because sometimes there are some controversial statements regarding God. For instance, there is a hadith that states that we can see God. This is Islamic hadith attributed to the Prophet, but we cannot see God. Where is the evidence? In the Quran, in this book, in Nakalan Tarani, God said to Moses, Moses, you would never be able to see me, neither in this life nor in the hereafter. So the identity of God is important. If we understand his identity, we're going to establish a good relationship with him, a safe and healthy relationship with God. After monotheism, we have the divine justice, al-adl al-ilahi. We have nubuwa, the prophets that God sent, we have the Day of Judgment. We have the Imam succession to the Prophet. We must believe in these. These are the strong foundations, the most important components of, of our faith, the Islamic faith. So the first thing is the Aqeedah. We must embrace it after understanding it, not just to emulate blindly, but to go through these articles and read them and research about them. The second foundation of our faith is the righteous deeds, al-amal al-salih, 
and God makes an oath, takes an oath in the Quran. Wal-asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr. Man is in constant loss. Illa accept, save those who illa ladina amanu, those who have deep faith wa amil salihat and perform good deeds. Paradise is not given free. It's not for free. It has a price. And the price for paradise is the good deeds. And if we don't produce good deeds, we come empty-handed. And God says, you get nothing in the hereafter without work. وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى ثُمَّ يُجْزَاهُ الْجَزَاءَ الْأَوْفَى Nothing for you unless save what you produce. وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى سَعِي You need to work. You need to produce. You need to give. This life is the life of work. In another verse, God says, Some people work, but unfortunately their work bears no fruit. Because it was not genuine. Their work is not clean. God wants us to be clean when we work. God wants us to be genuine. Be sincere. The amal, the work, has to be sincere, dedicated for the sake of God. God says, sometimes some people work in this life, but when they come in the hereafter expecting to see the results of their work, we tell them there are no results, zero. Your balance is zero. They ask why. We tell them, you didn't work for me, you work for others. Your intention was not God. Your intention was not clean, was not sincere. You were not honest. We come forth to the work they did and we make it just like ashes flying in the air. It's not solid. The hadith says, أَخْلِصْ قَلْبَكْ يَكْفِيكَ الْقَلِيلُ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ be sincere, be honest, be dedicated. You don't have to do so much work. You do little work. Little work is enough. Suffices you. يَكْفِيكَ الْقَلِيلُ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ If the intention is good, the heart is good, the niyyah is good, you are dedicated for the sake of God, you have ikhlas and earnestness, you are honest in your work, even if you do little, we accept it from you. We accept it. We accept that work from you rather than doing so much work, but you are not dedicated for God. God looks at the qualities, not the quantities. Qualities are more important. The nature of the work is very important. Even though you produce little, but God says, I will magnify it. I will amplify it. I will double it. I will triple it. So that is the second foundation of religion, the good deeds. And God always encourages us, work in this life, produce, give. Don't just sit idle, do nothing. You are judged by the work that you do. You are not judged on the day of judgment by your ancestry, by your family tree, by your color, by the city you were born in, by the tribe you belong to. None of these are important. What is important? إِنَّمَا تُجْزَوْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ You are being rewarded, rewarded, rewarded for what you have been doing, for what you have been doing, for your work. Thus God says, وَقُلْ اِعْمَلُ He encourages the Prophet to tell his community, اِعْمَلُ وَقُلْ اِعْمَلُ فَسَيْرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ God will observe your work, his apostle, and the community of the believers. And in fact, 
in fact, worshiping God means working. Means working. When God says in His book, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I created the jinn and the human for worship. He meant the worship here means working for God. Worship means you are a breadwinner. You are trying to sustain your family, help your family. This is an act of worship. You are a student going to school to educate yourself so you can find a better job and you can do a better service to your community. This is an act of worship. You are exercising, simply exercising in the morning, evening, just to maintain good health. This is an act of worship because you are maintaining good health to serve God, to serve the humanity. This is also an act of worship. You are getting married, an act of worship. Everything you do, the food that you eat, if you eat to sustain yourself so you can serve better, this is an act of worship. Every work which is positive or intended for a positive objective and goals is considered an act of worship. Plus, of course, the work that we do to protect the society, the poor, the needy, the destitutes, the neglected ones. In the narration of the Prophet wasallam, the best act in the eyes of God, in the eyes of God, the best act of a believer on earth is to feed the hungry stomachs. People who are hungry in your neighborhood, in your city, in your country, in other countries, when you reach out to them, when you bring them food, fresh food, clean food, healthy food, or you give them the money to buy the food, to satisfy the hungry stomachs. This is a noble act. One day, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, made a vow that he would not eat by himself. Why did he make that vow? Because he, when he built the house of God, It's a great work, great achievement. He built the house of God, him and him, uh, his son, Ishmael. Ishmael or Ismail. So he stood aside and he was looking at the house and he was impressed. He said, wow, what a great job I've done. So God said to him, oh, Ibrahim, yes, you did a great job, but you only built a physical house for me material house, a structure, just a plain structure, cubic structure, made of a bricks and mortar. But this is not the real work I sent you for. Abraham said, then God, what is the real work? If this is not the real work, then what is it? God said to him, I sent you to save people, to protect people, to take care of people, to reach out to people. So from that day, when God said to him, Ya Ibrahim, هل أشبعت جائعاً أم كسوت عرياناً? You feel proud of building a house, but did you feed a hungry person or did you clothe someone who's naked? So Ibrahim made a vow from that day that he tries to clothe those who are naked and feed those who are hungry. And he made a vow that I would not eat a meal by myself at all. I have to share my food. Every meal I eat, I have to share the food with others. So every day he has a guest. And whatever meal he can afford, sometimes a small meal, sometimes big, sometimes one dish, two dishes, he would share it 
with guests. One day, nobody showed up. So he stood outside his house on the highway where people pass. And he saw someone and he said to him, I'm inviting you to have food with me. So the man followed him to his house. He doesn't know the man. Neither the man knows him. So they sat to eat. And the man took the first bite. He was about to put the bite in his mouth. The luqma, the bite. Ibrahim said to him, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The man said, what? Don't you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? The man said, what is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? What is God? He said, you don't know God? Said, no, I don't know God. Said, I'm sorry. If I had known that you don't know God, I wouldn't have invited you. I thought you know God. The man said, well, it's never too late. I didn't eat it. So he puts it back in the plate. And he stands and he leaves. He was upset. When he left, God sent the angel to Abraham, saying to him, what did you do? What did you do with this man? Why did you treat him this way? This man is 50 years old. We fed him. We clothed him. We sustained him. We gave him provision. We took care of him. We never asked him about his religious identity. We never asked him about God. We never asked him about his belief. And you did not allow him to eat. You cut him through. And you're asking him, you're interrogating him about God? Why did you do this? Ibrahim was very upset and very regretful. So he started running after that man. Because God said to Ibrahim, Ibrahim, if you don't go and bring him back and make him happy and feed him, I will boycott you. So Ibrahim ran after him. He called upon him, oh man, my friend, stop. The man said, yeah, what do you want from me? Please come back home and eat, enjoy the food. I'm not going to ask you any question anymore. The man said, but why? Why did you change your mind? Earlier, you didn't allow me to eat. And you felt sorry because you invited me because I'm an unbeliever. And technically, you, you, you kicked me out of your house. So why are you are inviting me again? Abraham said to him, my friend, you know why I'm inviting you again? And I am pleading you to you to come back to my home and eat because that Lord who you did not recognize him and you did not even want to recognize him. He sent after me, he rebuked me, he criticized me, and he threatened me. He said, if you don't go after this man, this guest, I'm going to boycott you. The man said to Ibrahim, are you serious? Are you serious? He said, yes, I'm serious. My name is Ibrahim. I'm the messenger of God. And I receive revelation from God. And this is exactly what God said to me. Regarding you, the man said, then your Lord is a merciful Lord, compassionate Lord. It seems that your Lord is a good Lord. Ibrahim said, yes, of course he's a good Lord. The man said, if this is the case, I'm going to come to your house and eat the food and I'm going to believe in your Lord. Believe in such merciful and compassionate Lord. My friends, when you feed someone, when you help someone, don't ask him or her about their religious identity. Don't ask them whether they pray or not, whether they fast or not, whether they believe in this or not whether they are Muslims or not, whether they are believers or not, whether they are Shias or Sunnis or not, doesn't matter. People are human beings created by God. You give your goodness, your help to anyone who's in need. So that is the second component of religion. The third one, 
is the akhlaq. Akhlaq is the essence of religion, the beauty of religion, the attraction of religion. In fact, it is akhlaq and manners that makes religion beautiful, adorns religion, and adorns people too. And our Prophet is the messenger of akhlaq. Innama bu'ithtu, I only was sent to integrate the best of the ethics and morality of people. Innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al akhlaq. The hadith says, Rabbah azizin adallahu khuluqu. Sometimes a man comes from an honorable family, honorable background, but his manners are not good, he becomes disgraced. On the other hand, a person comes from no family, nowhere, nobody knows his parents, the name of his family, but he has noble manners. The hadith says, God made akhlaq and manners a connection بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ nas between him and people. How do you connect to God? Through what? Through what hobby? Through what sport, if, if it is correct to say that? Because some people correct, connect with each other through their hobbies. They play tennis together. This is how they make friends. They play basketball together. They go horseback riding together. They go fishing together. This is how they get to know each other. How do you connect with God? What is God's hobby? What is his hobby? Akhlaq. Good manners. This is his hobby. Good manners of God. فَحَسْبُ أَحَدِكُمْ فَحَسْبُ أَحَدِكُمْ أَنْ يَتَمَسَّكَ بِخُلُقٍ مُتَّصَلٍ بِاللَّهِ Try to connect with God through one of his good characters. Such as what? God is generous. If you become generous, you connect with God through the same hobby, the same attribute, the same sifa, the same characteristic. God is forbearing, hilm. If you, are, if you have forbearance, you're going to connect with God. God is forgiving. If you forgive others, you're going to connect with God. God is compassionate. If you have compassion towards others, you're going to connect fast with God. Someone who collected money for a long period of time to go to Hajj. The day he decided to go to Hajj, he was registered for Hajj. He puts his name in the caravan. He collects his, his staff, his, his, staff his, his, his belongings to go to Hajj. He's ready to go. He passed by a lady sitting in the street, begging. So he approached her. She said, I have, I'm a widow, and I have four orphans. All, all of those four orphans are females, little girls. My husband died, left me with nothing. And my daughters are the descendants of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but they have no food to eat. So the man who collected the money, who saved the money to go to Hajj with that money, he took the whole money and he gave it to that lady. He went back home. He said to his family, I changed my mind. I don't want to go to Hajj. They said, why? What happened? He didn't say anything. That's it. I changed my mind. He slept that night. He saw the Prophet in his dream greeting him smiling to him and saying to him, you saved my daughters, you saved my progeny, you saved my, you saved my children. And God immediately granted you the reward of Hajj. Granted you the reward of Hajj. Sometimes my friends, helping people out, saving their honor, their dignity, their lives, is more important is more important than some of the ritual sides of Islam some of the practices that we do God says in his book in this chapter 
وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا If you save one, say, one, one soul, one human soul for the sake of God, as if you have saved the entire humanity. That is the third component of Islam. Akhlaq. Akhlaq. True consciousness. True manners. And Imam al-Sadiq says, كُونُوا زَيْنًا لَنَا وَلَا تَكُونُوا شَيْنًا عَلَيْنَا be a source of attraction for us, not a source of damnation. حتى يقول الناس رحم الله جعفرا فلقد أدب شيعته. So people would say when they look at you, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, people say, may God bestow His mercy upon Jafar ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, because he, he well mannered, he taught his community the manners, good manners. He refined them very well. This is the message of Shia Islam. This is the message of Ahlul Bayt. And this is the message of Islam. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Wa ala al arwah alati halat bi finaika wa anakhat bi rahlik alaikum minni jami'an salam Allahi abada. Ma baqitu wa baqiya al laylu wa al nahar. Wa la ja'alahu Allahu akhir al ahdi minni li ziyaratikum. Assalamu ala al Hussein. Wa ala ali ibn al Hussein. Wa ala awlad al Hussein. وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته